today I'm going to be showing you how to make chocolate bundt cake in the Instant Pot. Hi, I'm Karen Peterson, owner of the blog 365daysofcrockpot.com where I share Instant Pot and slow cooker recipes with you for every day of the year. Here on YouTube, I come every Tuesday and share with you some sort of Instant Pot trick, tip, recipe, something great about the Instant Pot. We all love our Instant Pots and I'm trying to help you use it more often and learn how to use it if you don't already know. So today I'm going to be sharing with you something that will be perfect to make for Valentine's Day. It's an ultra dense chocolatey bundt cake and you can make it in your Instant Pot. Now this isn't a huge bundt cake because it comes uh, in the size of a pan that will fit inside your Instant Pot, which is kind of nice actually because you don't want a ton of leftovers of this cake because I promise you, you will not be able to stop eating this cake. It is so good. If you're a fan of fluffy and dry cake, you're not going to like this cake. It's super dense and it's super moist. So if that seems like something that's up your alley, you might want to try this cake this week for Valentine's Day or any other time on the weekend, whatever it might be. So go ahead, watch this video. I'm going to show you exactly what to do to make this delicious chocolate Instant Pot bun cake. The first thing that you want to do is bring 3 fourths cup of water to a boil. I stuck mine in the microwave for about a minute, a minute and a half. Now I'm going to go ahead and add in 1 third cup of cocoa powder and you're just going to stir that cocoa powder into the hot water until it gets nice and creamy and thick and it dissolves completely. Alright, you're going to stir together sugar, 1 and 1 fourth cup some salt and some baking soda. We're gonna use 3 fourths teaspoon salt and 1 and 1 fourth teaspoon of baking soda. And then a couple of eggs. Now add that to a mixing bowl and go ahead and use a whisk just to mix that together really quickly. All right, after that's um, whisked up very well, you're gonna go ahead and add in some Greek yogurt, a half a cup. You can also use sour cream if you don't have Greek yogurt. Then you'll add in a half a cup of canola oil or vegetable oil and a teaspoon of vanilla. Go ahead and just stir that up. Now go ahead and add in one and one third cups of all-purpose flour and you're just gonna mix that for two minutes. Once you've stirred that for two minutes, go ahead and add in your cocoa mixture with the water that you've mixed earlier. Stir that in and you're gonna mix this for three minutes. Once you've stirred this for three minutes, you're gonna go ahead and put it in your pan. Now this is a half size bundt cake pan. It is um, small enough to be able to fit inside your Instant Pot. So if you want to see where I got this, I'm gonna put the link to um, purchase this if you're interested in the notes below. But, okay, so what we wanna do is make sure before we put the batter in there, is just really spray it really nicely with some cooking spray so that it doesn't stick. So make sure to get the middle part and the size parts, um, just coat it really well with the cooking spray. Now we're gonna add in this delicious batter. Don't you worry, I tried a little bit on my finger and it was super good. All right, once your batter is in your pan, you're gonna go ahead and get your trivet that came with your Instant Pot or if you have one of these, they're very handy for recipes like this. This is the, o um, the OXO brand, OXO brand, and um, you can get it online or wherever. I'm gonna go ahead and put the link to this product in the notes, but basically it's a sling. It's a way for you to lower and lift food out of your Instant Pot, and it's made for pressure cookers, the six quart or the eight quart size. So that's what I've been using the last few days and loving it and it even has a way for you to kind of hook it together if you prefer or unhook, whatever. So, let's set that aside. I'm gonna show you exactly how to do this. Go ahead and pour in one and one half cups inside the um, insert. Go ahead and lower your sling with the cake pan on it into the pot. It's really important that there's air around the pan so that air can circulate around the pan and cook the food. So make sure to get the right size of pan and use the right size of Instant Pot, obviously. Um, now we're gonna go ahead and cover the Instant Pot with the lid. 
Make sure the valve is set to sealing and not to venting. And then go ahead and set the manual button here to 27 minutes. Once the pot has finished its cooking time, it will start counting up. Once it gets to 10 minutes, L, it just means lapse time. Go ahead and move the valve to venting. Go ahead and remove the lid when you can. And then you can just use your sling to pull out the cake. And it's kind of cool because this um, sling serves as a cooling rack as well. You can just let it sit on the sling for 10 minutes and cool down. While the cake is cooling, I'm just gonna make a chocolate ganache that's gonna kind of serve as the icing to pour over the top. So what I did is I brought uh, half a cup of heavy cream to um, a boil in the microwave. I just put it in there for one minute. Now I'm gonna go ahead and stir in one half cup of semi-sweet chocolate chips. I'm gonna go ahead and let this sit for about two or three minutes and then I'm gonna stir it when all the chocolate's melted and get it really creamy and smooth. So I went ahead and whisked this up until it was smooth and creamy. This is the ganache that will go on top. So I'm going to set that aside for now. And once this cake is cooled for about 10 minutes in the pan, we're going to go ahead and flip it over and put it onto a platter or a plate or cake stand or whatever you have. First, I'm going to kind of just use a um, butter knife to just kind of go around the edges a little bit to loosen up the sides so that it comes out a little bit easier. Now I'm going to go ahead and take this plate and turn it upside down on top of the pan. And then I'm going to just flip it quickly the other way. Hopefully this will work. Ready? Oh, it's a little bit hot, so I'm going to grab some top cut. All right, ready? Three, two, one, go. We'll see if this works. Go ahead and just gently lift off the cake pan. Perfect. It came out very nicely. Any imperfections in it will be covered up with the ganache, so that's where you kind of, it saves your bacon. So you can go ahead and let this cool for a bit longer, um, and then you're gonna go ahead and uh, just pour this chocolate ganache over the top. I'm gonna go ahead and do it right now, just for, so you can see what it looks like. And you can do it really any way you see fit, but I'm gonna kind of just drizzle it like. It's gonna pool up a little bit on the bottom here, but that's okay. If you wanna set the pan onto a cooling rack and put some parchment or a pan underneath it, you can let that um, ganache just go ahead and, and go through the wire rack. But you know what? I kinda of like it on my plate because I like to just dip it in with the cake and eat it all. It's all good. So hopefully you love this chocolate bunk cake this Valentine's Day as much as we loved it at our house. Happy Valentine's Day to me. So good.